Hi everyone, Patrick here. Today's video will be a book review on The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. As some of you probably know already that this is a very exciting video for me because I love John Gwynn's books. I love John Gwynn's books so much and I've read The Faithful and the Fallen twice. I've read of Blood and Bone trilogy and The Shadow of the Gods has been my most anticipated book of the year at the number one spot. It is my most anticipated book of the year and it was honestly painful seeing a lot of people getting the book earlier than me, reviewing it earlier than me, and yes, it was painful to me. I actually thought of deleting my social media because of that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad that I finally got the chance to read this and review this early. And even though my expectation towards this book was so high, John Gwynn was still able to meet my expectation. I have been spreading praises about John Gwynn's books for four years now, and with this book, I don't see it stopping anytime soon or maybe ever. And for those of you who haven't read any of John Gwynn's books, don't worry, uh, The Shadow of the Gods takes place in a completely new series in a new world. It's completely separate from the Banished Land saga, so you can definitely start from here if you haven't read any of John Gwynn's books. That being said, you should still read the Banished Land saga. There's some of the most amazing epic fantasy out there, and you'll be missing out if you don't give them a try. After the gods battled and drove themselves to extinction, the cataclysm of their fall shattered the land of Vigrid the battle plane. The shadow of the gods revolves around three different main characters with their own respective quests in the new age of storm and murder, Orca, Vark, and Elvar. Their storylines of blood, death, battle fame, and vengeance are seemingly separate for almost the entirety of the book, but rest assured, their paths eventually converge and oh my god, it was such an electrifying convergence. Ever since I finished reading The Faithful and the Fallen in early 2017, I've mentioned several times that it would be amazing if Gwyn one day decides to write a Norse-inspired epic fantasy series. Well, here we are. This is one of John Gwyn's bloodiest books so far, and that's saying a lot. Seriously, if you've read Gwyn's previous books in the Banished Land saga, you should know just how bloody this book gets when I said that. But with that in mind, you should also remember that the key elements that made John Gwynn's book so damn lovable are all evident in this phenomenal start to a series. Family, friendship, the pursuit of fame, and loyalty, and of course, superbly written characters are still vital in this book. John Gwynn has always been excellent at characterizations. This is one of his most tremendous assets as a storyteller. He has maintained this so consistently since his debut. Throughout all the seven books in the Banished Land Saga, this was maintained consistently, and he only gets better and better at this. And even then, I was still so surprised by the creation of this character named Orca. I don't want to say too much about this character yet. After all, there is still about a month left before this book comes out. But before I get to read this book, uh, early reviewers and readers have pretty much said that Orca is their favorite character. And I have to echo that sentiment. Just with this one book alone, Orca has become one of my favorite characters in fantasy. Such an amazing character. Her storyline was just cover to cover compelling and she's an extremely well-written character. And although it was so good to see her amazing talent in battles, what I love about her isn't exclusive to that. It's the way she prioritized her family over everything else that made me care so much about her. Orca's character development and interaction with Torkel, Breka, Liv, and Mort gave her the necessary characterizations that made her rampage and destructions towards her enemies so damn satisfying. Then there's also the next main character named Vark. Vark wants vengeance for her sister's death, and to achieve this objective, Vark has his fate intertwined with the Bloodsworn. Immediately from the first two chapters where Vark battled Einar, the half-troll, I was immediately compelled by his storyline. Friendship and found family in a hard world are some of the main themes in The Shadow of the Gods, and I think that John Gwyn has displayed this effectively through Vark's perspective. It was immensely heartwarming to me to see that Vark, who has been alone all his life, developed friendship with the members of the Bloodsworn. And remember that Bloodsworn is the name of the series, the Bloodsworn Saga. So obviously Vark and the members of the Bloodsworn are an important group of people in this book and definitely within this series. Also, there is a lot of comic relief within uh, his perspective because of this side character named Savik. If you're on Twitter, you might have seen a lot of people talking about cheese when they mention this book. There is a reason for that and I will leave it for you to find out for yourself. So I've been giving a lot of praises towards uh, Orca and Vark. But was there an issue with this book? I will say that I do have a minor nitpick on Elvar's character. Elvar's character is good, but her story takes a long time for me to get invested in. To be precise, it took me about half of the book 
Yes, it took me about half of the novel before I get uh, fully invested in Elva's storyline. I think the reason behind this is that uh, in the first half of the books, Elva's storyline uh, with her battle grim companion was almost all actions, but we didn't get to see why she wanted to pursue this battle theme. Once we get to know that in the middle of the book, her characterizations improve significantly. And not gonna lie, the second half of the novel, her storyline exploded magnificently. So good, so insane. Again, similar to Vark's storyline, friendship and found family are some of the main themes in her storyline. If you've read John Gwynn's previous books, you might have realized that when I say three main characters, this is the lowest POV count for John Gwynn's books. Malice used seven POV characters, and A Time of Dread uses four POV characters. Shadow of the Gods uses only three. But this fortunately worked incredibly well for the narrative, especially because uh, Vigrid compared to the Banished Land is a much smaller place in comparison. And once again, I'm reminded just how safe a lot of other epic fantasy books are. If you're new to John Gwynn's books, let me tell you something that John Gwynn is merciless. No one is safe in his books. You will always fear for the protagonist and you will always want retribution for the enemies. That's one of the best thing about reading John Gwynn's books. And the more fantasy books that I read, the more I wish that more authors are as gifted as Gwynn at writing battle scenes. Seriously, he's just a genius at this. For me, his exceptional battle scenes are also what puts Gwynn's above so many other fantasy authors. Let's take Orca, for example. She is a new challenger to the Bloody Nine from the first Lost series by Joe Abercrombie. Her calculated rampaging madness and unflinching brutality were insane, intense, and incredible. The vivid chaos and intensity of being in the shield wall and how deadly it can inflict is back again here. Then, there are also more monsters like trolls, vison, naken, and magics involved now. The shadow of the gods is imbued with jaw-dropping action sequences. The battle between humans, monsters, and the tainted, the tainted are people with cursed blood, all just felt splendidly immersive and real. You know that Brandon Sanderson is often known for his climatic final chapters that earn him the title of Sanderlands, which is Sanderson's Avalanche. That term is well deserved. Sanderson is one of my top favorite authors, and it's unbelievable that John Gwynn, who has pretty much done the same in all of his books, still doesn't have a term for his achievements. You know what, from now on I'm going to call John Gwynn's final chapters in his books the Gwynn's Tornado, Gwynedo. The last 15% in the Shadow of the Gods was just breathtaking. The convergence of carnage, violence, and emotions was totally enthralling, and it will leave you begging for more. Lastly, before I end this review, I want to mention that the Shadow of the Gods contain Gwyn's most detailed world building yet. As mentioned several times already, this is a heavily Norse-inspired fantasy series inspired by Ragnarok and Beowulf. The details in the characters' appearances, clothing, weaponry, exhibited Gwyn's passion for this world and the Viking mythologies. The history of the battle plane plus the intricacy of the environment and landscape truly transformed Vigrid into a location that felt so real. There is Snaka, the father of the gods, and his sons, Uvril, Berzer, Rota, Orna, Likrifa, and Oskutred. They were all definitely Ragnarok-inspired world building, and I love how Gwyn connects these mythical beings into the current events of the story with the inclusion of the Tainted. As I just said, the Tainted are people with cursed blood that mankind hates and hunts. They're descended from the gods I just mentioned earlier, and depending on the cursed blood, each Tainted is capable of channeling their blood to enhance their own respective abilities and power. If you love the Norse-inspired God of War video game, you will love this one, seriously. Between Malice, A Time of Dread, and The Shadow of the Gods, I think John Gwynn has just crafted his most well-polished start to his series yet. And as a bonus, as someone who has read all of John Gwynn's books, let me tell you, this won't be his best work in the series, not yet. John Gwynn is always the best when he's writing the final book of his series. Rat, The Conclusion to the Faithful on the Fallen, is one of my favorite books of all time. And the same can be applied to A Time of Courage, the final book in Of Blood and Bone Trilogy, and the conclusion to the Banished Land Saga. And I'm sure the final book in the Bloodstone Saga will follow that notion. The Shadow of the Gods marked the beginning of a new superlative and legendary blood-soaked Norse-inspired epic fantasy series. I'm sure a lot of epic fantasy readers in the future will love this one so much. I'm sure of it. It's just such an absolutely amazing book, and I cannot wait for you to beat Orca, the Battle Sworn, and the Battle Grim. And that's it for today's review. Thank you so much for watching, and let me know is this book on your radar or not, because it should be. And if you haven't read any of John Gwynn's books, it's never too late. Do it, please. 
Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I hope you will love this book when you get to it. Bye-bye.